Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you for joining GenScript webinar today. I'm Boon Hua, Regional Marketing Specialist from GenScript, and I'm your host for today. If this is your first time joining GenScript's webinar, here is some background of GenScript. GenScript is a global leading biotech company providing life science services and products with gene synthesis, peptide, protein, antibody, and preclinical drug development service capabilities and driven by the corporate mission of making people and nature healthier through biotechnology, GenScript strives to become the most trustworthy biotech company in the world. In today's webinar, we are going to walk you through how to suppress replications competent SARS-CoV-2 variants with reprogrammed CRISPR-Cas13b. Let me introduce our guest speaker today, Dr. Mohamed Fari. Dr. Mohamed Fari is the Senior Research Fellow of Peter McCallum Cancer Center. He obtained his PhD in France in year 2012, where he uncovers a subset of non-coding RNAs that regulate cell plasticity in high-grade brain tumors. He did his postdoctoral training in the Single Molecule Biophysics Lab in Netherlands, where he developed new single molecule approaches to investigate the biology of known coding RNAs and CRISPR effectors with high spatial and temporal resolutions. In August 2018, he joined Peter McCallum Cancer Center, and he is currently leading projects of focusing on reprogramming RNA targeted CRISPR tools called CRISPR Cas13 for precise transcriptome remodeling. This webinar will take about an hour, and if you have any questions throughout the presentations, please feel free to leave your questions in the Q&A box, and we will get back to you after the presentations. So, um, Dr. Mohamed, over to you right now. Hi there, I'm Mohamed Farih, a senior research fellow in Peter McCallum Cancer Center in Melbourne, Australia. And today I would like to share with you a really exciting story we recently developed in which uh, we suppressed uh, SARS-CoV-2 strains using reprogrammed crispr cas gene. So our research is really inspired by the way this fascinating bacteria can fight the, their invader viruses, the called bacteriophages. And I'm sure a lot of you are uh, familiar with the CRISPR that is used as adaptive immunity in bacteria to fight bacteriophages. Um, so what the bacteria basically does, it takes a snapshot of the viral genome, integrated it into its own genome and transcribe uh, basically uh, an antisense RNA or guide RNA that can guide CRISPR proteins to recognize the viral genome when this virus comes back and, and, and mediate interference either at the level of the DNA or the RNA. And this recognition is really sequence based. So the bacteria has a memory uh, that is based on transcription of nucleic acid RNA that has a perfect match with with the uh, with the viral RNA. Um, so this, this CRISPR adaptive immunity is um, basically uh, the, summarized in three uh, key steps, which is CRISPR adaptation, CRISPR RNA biogenesis when you transcribe the gut RNA that drives uh, the CRISPR uh, proteins, and CRISPR interference where this. Uh, CRISPR loaded guide RNA can mediate target recognition through the base pairing RNA DNA base pairing or RNA RNA base pairing. So uh, I'm sure most of you are familiar with the Nobel Prize that was awarded last year to the discovery of uh, uh, the Cas9, characterization of Cas9 by uh, Professor Emmanuel Charpentier and Professor Jennifer Doudna. That's really highlight. The, the therapeutic um, potential of this exciting uh, uh, system. So uh, uh, likely with the genomic investigation of bacterial uh, uh, genome, uh, scientists all over the world discovered many, many uh, types of, of CRISPR. So Cas9 sits here, the, in, with the uh, class two type two, but there are different other CRISPRs that are act 
either as uh, protein complexes or a single enzyme like Cas9. And they can target single-stranded DNA or double-stranded DNA or RNA. And our group is really interested in this family called Cas13, which targets RNA instead of, of DNA. So why Cas13 is, um, is, is interesting for us? Uh, Cas13, first of all, is a single protein uh, that is loaded with a single guide RNA. And can basically that single guide RNA can guide this Cas13 to recognize its target RNA in sequence specific manner. Uh, so this sequence specific recognition basically provides us with the great opportunity to silence any transcript of interest. Yeah, uh, we and so this Cas13 is really interesting because also its spacer sequence, which mediates the target recognition, has a 30 nucleotide long spacer which basically offer a zero of targeting probability uh, from a prediction point of view. And the one can basically reprogram this Cas13 with multiple guide RNA to target several uh, tumor drivers or several uh, pathogenic genes if required. So, and you can see from this high profile paper, so there is really a lot of excitement uh, around the uh, discovery of, of Cas13. So this uh, uh, structural data from uh, Louis on basically shows how Cas13 uh, loaded with its guide RNA can form an RNA-RNA duplex with its target that mediates the activation of two nuclease domains that, that will degrade the RNA target in a, uh, in a sequence-specific manner. Uh, so Cas9 and Cas13, although they, they act at, uh, at different levels, so Cas9 targets the DNA and Cas13 targets RNA, they are very complementary approach that, that basically uh, can allow us to achieve this personalized uh, medicine to target any uh, disease code causing gene in sequence specific manner. So just Cas9 targets the DNA and it makes a, a permanent editing while Cas13 targets RNA. And this targeting is reversible and acts exactly as uh, the way uh, small inhibitory molecules are targets protein. So it's reversible, you can switch it on and off. The specificity, we presume that Cas13 ha would have higher specificity as it has uh, a longer spacer sequence. So it's 13 nucleotides, the, the long spacer sequence. And we know that the, the specificity is uh, uh, correlated with the length of the spacer. Yeah. And we know that Cas9 basically uh, requires uh, a palm sequence to mediate the targeting, while for Cas13, we don't know much whether uh, yeah, a palm sequence or palm-like sequence is, is required. Mm. So uh, what basically uh, Cas13 is, is a new uh, uh, protein that has been discovered in 2015, but we still do not fully understand the target recognition process and molecular mechanisms of, of, uh, of target uh, uh, degradation by Cas13. So in textbooks, we like to draw the RNA as a linear molecule, where Cas13 and with its guard RNA can easily access this uh, 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 targeted RNA. But in reality, RNA can fold into secondary structure and, and, and 3D structure and can interact with other RNA binding protein and ribosomes, which makes uh, target accessibility a little bit complex. The guide RNA can also fold into secondary structure and the affinity between Cas13 and its guide RNA might vary between two different uh, guide RNA. So all these um, uh, parameters that I, uh, uh, I just described uh, highlight that uh, the target recognition process and efficient silencing of target RNA might be governed by several parameters which we do not fully understand. So 
Um, in our group, we are really interested in, in, in three uh, research area. The first one is to understand the molecular basis of RNA targeting with CRISPR-Cas13b. The second uh, uh, the research question we are interested in is whether we can reprogram Cas13 to suppress uh, viral RNA, and today we'll be focusing on silencing SARS-CoV-2 uh, RNA. And we are also interested in reprogramming Cas13 to silence tumor driver as a proof of concept of personalized therapy. And for the interest of time today, I will be speaking about research area one and two. So, so just to introduce this topic, basically, as I said, uh, Cas13 loaded with its guide RNA cannot equally access different regions of uh, a targeted transcript, although that there is a full base pairing between the guide RNA and the target RNA. Why is this? Is because the RNA can fold into secondary and 3D structure. And you see here, this hairpin might prevent Cas13 from uh, binding to its target, as Cas13 does not have any helicase, RNA helicase domain that will allow it to unwind this uh, uh, RNA, RNA duplex. Uh, uh, RNA interacts with RNA binding protein and ribosomes, as illustrated in this schematics, which might act as, as roadblocks that prevent Cas13 from, from binding. So one of the questions we are trying to address is, uh, how the RNA landscape and sequences can affect the silencing efficiency of Cas13 and the target recognition process. Uh, so basically to answer this question, we, uh, we decided to uh, subclone uh, Cas13 tools in specific vectors that allow us to make lontiviruses and uh, tag Cas13 with uh, different fluorophores and, and, and uh, uh, the selection markers, so we can make lontiviruses of Cas13 and guide RNA and transduce our the, the cells of interest uh, with these lontiviruses. Uh, uh, so just to uh, exemplify the efficiency we have with Cas13, here we transduce uh, the hex cells with the uh, uh, Cas13 that is tagged with BFP. So you see the blue fluorescence here and it's loaded with the non-targeting guide RNA. So you, as a target, we have M-cherry here, and you see that you have high fluorescence of M-cherry because Cas13 has just non-targeting guide RNA as a control. However, now when we provide Cas13 with the guide RNA targeting the M-cherry, so you see complete silencing of the M-cherry. Uh, a signal here due to RNA degradation by Cas13. So this system is very specific and highly effective to silence RNA of interest in sequence specific manner. So uh, as just uh, a proof of concept, we designed a couple of guide RNA as spanning the, the coding sequence of M cherry, and we call those guide RNA, guide RNA one, two, three, four, till 11. And you see that all these guide RNA, they have a perfect match with the target, as you can see here, and they are expected to yield uh, uh, a decent silencing efficiency. And indeed, this is what we see that the majority of those guide RNA we tested, they have really high silencing efficiency, although we saw that some guide RNA are more effective than, than other guide RNA. So we're really intrigued by this observation and we want uh, to uncover what really makes some guide RNA more potent than, than the others. Uh, so in, in this experiment, for example, we titrated the concentration of the guide RNA we provide to the cells to accurately calculate the dose that allow us to silence 50% of the target RNA, which is m cherry here. So I hope you appreciate that those guide RNA, this is a non-targeting guide RNA as a control. And even though if you increase the concentration of guide RNA, there is no silencing at all. However, the guide RNA targeting at Cherry, I hope you appreciate that there is dose dependent silencing, more guide RNA we provide, more silencing we obtain. And Cas13 really acts here as a, as a drug 
uh, so uh, we just provide the cells with the plasmid um, and the cells they can make uh, a lot of, of a drug, caster team drug in form of a guide RNA to silence the, the target in, in a dose dependent uh, manner. I hope you appreciate here that there are some guides that are extremely potent like guide RNA number 10, while there are other guides that are nearby and that they are uh, really low uh, silencing efficiency and the difference between two adjacent guide RNA could be higher than 10 fold difference. In, in terms of silencing. Although those guard RNA, they have exactly uh, uh, 30 nucleotide match with, with the target. And this is uh, quantified here where you see the IC50 of these two guard RNA tell us that are less potent than, than the other guard RNA. Uh, so we, we basically went on, I wanted to understand what are really the molecular mechanisms that allow CAS13 to be efficient and not so efficient uh, with, with other guide RNA. So we designed an approach that is called single nucleotide resolution tiled guide RNA. So uh, for instance, here we designed 61 tiled guide RNA and that are two adjacent guide RNA are spaced just by one nucleotide in such a way that we can capture how the silencing landscape change when we move from a position to position and generate single nucleotide resolution view on, on the silencing efficiency we, we obtain with, with the tiled guide RNA. So to make the long story short, the data we obtained were really uh, uh, surprising, as, as you can appreciate here that we have this region where we could achieve 100% silencing efficiency of the target. And, and just next to it, there are other guard RNA that could not achieve any silencing that, at all. So uh, there must be uh, some parameters that, that uh, govern the silencing efficiency of, of CAS-13 that we still do not fully uh, uh, understand. So th this data really showed us that, th that uh, it's likely that there is a palm or palm-like sequence uh, next to the spacer that, that would restrict the silencing efficiency as two adjacent guide RNA still achieved very high silencing efficiency while the palm sequence presumably changed when we moved from, from a position to position. Uh, that also tells us that, that uh, uh, the secondary structure of the target might be uh, important to some extent, as you see that this region seems to be open here while this region seems to be uh, closed. It also tells us what's the likelihood of silencing efficiency the one could achieve with just a random design of guide RNA. Uh, so what we currently doing is that we are uh, um, uh, using uh, a library screen where we have over 200 guide RNA. We uh, individual guide RNA that we manually cloned and we exactly know what is their silencing efficiency. And so we rank them based on their silencing efficiency. And basically we looked at uh, various parameters like target and guide RNA folding, target and guide RNA hybridization energy, the CG content, the protospacer flanking sequence or pub like whether there is any sequence that, that could explain the discrepancy in, in silencing efficiency and, and, and whether there is a spacer sequence preference, whether some CAS-13 would prefer some spacer sequence uh, the, over other sequences. Uh, so we conducted this bioinformatic analysis in collaboration with uh, Qi Zhao and, and Amit and Wing Xing, and we have some really exciting data that, that for interest of time, I, uh, I, I won't be able to, uh, to tell you more today, but hopefully next time. Uh, so what we are doing right now is basically incorporating 
this uh, knowledge we gained from this bioinformatic analysis into a web-based uh, page to help the community to design the most effective guide RNA based on the prediction we have in, in place. Uh, we are also interested in understanding how specific CAS-13 is. And as I said in the beginning, the specificity of CRISPR and other uh, RNA-guided uh, uh, RNA interference proteins is really mediated by the base pairing between the spacer and the target. So, so the idea here is that when we have 30 nucleotide base pairing between the guide RNA and the target, we should get a full silencing efficiency. But by introducing mismatches between the target and guide RNA, we can explore whether the what's the degree of mismatch tolerance and therefore was the degree of specificity of, of CAS-13. So this is what we did here. We introduced three nucleotide mismatch from the three prime end of the spacer to six nucleotide to nine nucleotide to 12 nucleotide and so on. And we probe the silencing efficiency of each construct. So I hope you appreciate here that we have full silencing efficiency with the wall type uh, guide RNA. When we mutate the first three nucleotide mismatch, there is no much change in terms of silencing efficiency. So CAS-13 retain its silencing efficiency despite three nucleotide mismatch. But when we go beyond this three nucleotide mismatch, we completely lose the silencing efficiency of CAS-13. Here and we did a uh, similar sorry, study, sorry, from the from the five prime end at Yes, sorry, I just lost my, my screen for, for a second. I apologize for, for that. So when we did a five prime and metagenesis here, uh, we, we noticed that we have full loss of silencing starting from the five, three, three nucleotide uh, mismatch we introduced at the five prime end. Uh, so, we went on and generated different constructs with six nucleotide mismatches at different position of the spacer, five nucleotide mismatch, four nucleotide mismatch, and three nucleotide mismatch. And the idea is to probe the limit of silencing efficiency and to identify when the silencing switch from, uh, uh, from uh, when the the mismatch and pair the silencing efficiency of CAS-13. I hope you appreciate here that with six nucleotide mismatch, we have full loss of silencing efficiency. Five and four nucleotide mismatch led to an impaired silencing efficiency that is really position dependent. So for example, these positions, uh, they led to complete loss of silencing efficiency, while internally region seems to uh, lead to a partial loss of silencing efficiency. When we have three nucleotide mismatch, the silencing efficiency was, uh, uh, was retained with, uh, with most constructors, really uh, a minor loss of silencing efficiency, except the except when we introduce a three nucleotide mismatch at the five prime end of this space. Uh, so we also did uh, introduce several SNPs at uh, internal position where we alternated uh, 
two base pairing and one mismatch, two base pairing, one mismatch, three base pairing, one mismatch, four base pairing, one mismatch, and so on. And I hope you appreciate here that all these constructs led to the loss of silencing efficiency. So this data really tells us that when you introduce internal mismatch, you destabilize spacer target interaction and therefore CAS-13 lose its silencing ability. Uh, so the, this is what's really encouraging in terms of understanding how CAS-13 works and whether we can reprogram CAS-13 to silence other pathogenic genes. And, and I will dedicate the rest of the time I have here to talk about the use of CAS-13 to suppress uh, uh, replication competent SARS-CoV-2 variants in infected cells. So just a brief introduction about SARS-CoV-2, and I'm sure most of you are familiar with this uh, virus as we learned the hard way when this virus uh, uh, turned our life uh, upside down. So you know that SARS-CoV-2 caused the COVID-19 pandemic and there are several millions dead worldwide and an unprecedented social and economic crisis because of this virus. This virus belongs to the uh, beta coronavirus family and it binds to ICE2 receptor on the surface of uh, uh, respiratory epithelial cells to enter our, uh, our body. Uh, so there are no antiviral drugs that are effective against those uh, di di this virus uh, yet, and the mutational escape uh, of this uh, of virus basically challenged the sustainability of antiviral therapeutics, monoclonal antibodies, and even vaccines. And there are many studies showing that the, this virus has the ability to evolve and escape these antiviral uh, approaches we, uh, we use. So this is a, a positive uh, RNA strand uh, virus. So the genome of the virus is a, is a positive RNA strand, which means it's ribosome ready that, that we can translate protein. The virus can translate protein directly from its, uh, its genome, uh, but also the virus can transcribe subgenomic RNA that serves as a template for further translation of other uh, uh, viral protein like spike nucleocapsid RNA dependent RNA polymerase and proteases, which are a key uh, uh, protein and enzyme for a viral proliferation and, and, uh, and dissemination. Uh, so uh, it's pretty much you can. Uh, uh, see here that RNA is really at the heart of, of viral biology here. Uh, this virus relies on its RNA to make you know, uh, its genome, to make its uh, structural protein and non-structural protein. So we thought that we have really great opportunity to silence this virus by reprogramming Cas13 to cleave its, its RNA in sequence specific manner. Uh, so, so the first aim we had is whether we can reprogram CAS-13 tools to target SARS-CoV-2 genomic and subgenomic RNA, and whether we can use this uh, to develop a molecular blueprint of antiviral therapeutics to rapidly silence uh, new viruses that may emerge in the future. And, and surely there will be other pandemic beyond this, this one. So the approach we use, we use bioinformatic pipelines we developed in-house uh, to design uh, a guide RNA that are tiled across the genome of the virus from its five prime end to a three prime end. And we roughly have uh, 29,800 guide RNA that we filter through this bioinformatic pipeline to remove sequences like the contains uh, 40 repeats or longer that would stop the transcription. We remove also a guide RNA that predicted to fold into uh, 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 stem loop structure that might prevent the loading into Cas13 
or with the target that is predicted to fold into a stable uh, RNA, RNA duplex that would hinder uh, target recognition and, and a process. So uh, we ended up with uh, roughly 800 guide RNA from which we picked a handful of guide RNA that we tested in, in our uh, uh, functional study that I will show you uh, in a second. So the first target we choose to work with is a called a spike glycoprotein, which is really a key molecule for the virus to enter the cells through the interaction with the ICE2 receptor, as, as I said. Uh, so uh, basically, the, the, the approach we use is, is, is based on a reporter system where we can create a chimeric uh, spike transcript mm -hmm. with the with the RNA, with the uh, with the spike RNAs fused to GFP, so we have these uh, two genes that are co-transcribed, and any silencing of the spike would lead to the destabilization of this uh, uh, chimeric RNA and loss of GFP uh, fluorescence. So what we do basically, we have Cas13 that is tagged with the BFP so we can track the cells that express uh, Cas13. We have the guide RNA that is uh, cloned here, the spacer uh, of guide RNA targeting, uh, targeting the spike is cloned here. And we have this chimeric uh, transcript that is cloned in the plasmid. And we co-transfect the cells with these three components. And so what happened in the cells basically is guide RNA is transcribed, loaded into Cas13, and the guide RNA will guide target recognition and RNA degradation. And we use fluorescence microscopy to evaluate the efficiency of each guide RNA as the loss of GFP indicate a high silencing efficiency of the target. So we tested this system in two cell lines, the 293 hex cells and the Vero cells that are susceptible to SARS-CoV-2. And these cells are express non-targeting guide RNA. And I hope you appreciate here with four different guide RNA targeting the spike, we have really high silencing efficiency that is uh, quantified here that can reach up to 90 or 99 percent with, with some guide RNA like guide RNA number two here. Uh, so uh, you can pretty much use this as a drug, as I said, and we titrated the amount of guide RNA we express inside the cells and you see that uh, with the with the non-targeting guide rna the silencing efficiency does not change while when we increase the amount of guide rna targeting the spike we have those dependent silencing of the of the spike and we can calculate the potency of this guide rna and the 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 ic50 is at the uh, picomolar range. Mm. So this is a, a, a potent guide RNA that can silence the spike transcript. And we moved on to create some uh, constructs to show the specificity of silencing where we introduced a mismatch. So the blue residues here shows a mismatch with the target. And, and basically we introduced a three nucleotide, six nucleotide, and nine nucleotide mismatches at the five prime end, at the internal region, or the three prime end of the spacer. So, uh, so the data shows that the, really the targeting is uh, dependent on the base pairing between the guide RNA and the target RNA. When we introduce three nucleotides, six nucleotides, nine nucleotide mismatch, we gradually lose on silencing efficiency either at the five prime end, three prime end, uh, five prime end internal region or the five prime end of the space. So that really tells us that, that this is sequence specific targeting. The off-targeting of the host RNA is highly unlikely because you need an extensive base pairing with the target to activate the nuclease and mediate the degradation. And that this system might tolerate few uh, nucleotides, mismatches that, that would provide the, 
uh, may provide resilience against uh, mutational viral escape. And then we come back to, to that point a little bit uh, later. So we also wanted to know whether uh, guide RNA that are tiled across defined region of the spike transcript would yield similar silencing efficiency, or we would see uh, that the silencing efficiency is dependent on RNA landscape and sequences, as I described previously in the in Cherry systems. And indeed, this is what we see. So we did again this tile uh, single nucleotide uh, uh, resolution experiment. And we see that there are some regions that are extremely open and silenceable, and there are other regions that seems to be closed and yield very poor silencing efficiency. So it's really um, interesting here, for example, between those two guide RNA, although they have only one nucleotide difference out of 30, there is a huge difference in terms of silencing efficiency, and we still do not fully understand what makes those to guard RNA uh, uh, highly or, or, or completely inefficient, highly efficient or completely inefficient. But overall, this is really tells us that 95 of guide RNA we designed could achieve 50% uh, or higher silencing efficiency. And it seems that, that we do not have any uh, a, a palm-like or, or protospacer flanking sequence that would constrain uh, the silencing efficiency of CAS-13 as observed in other CRISPR um, uh, type. And the RNA landscape and sequence seems to define the silencing potential of, of a given guide RNA. So we moved on and tested this silencing efficiency in another system, which is nucleo uh, protein. It's a protein extremely important for uh, that binds to the viral genome and allows the packaging of viral genome inside the capsid. And this protein is in general uh, very conserved in, in, in coronaviruses. So we thought that would be a, a potent target to, to silence. So we did the same assay. Uh, basically, when we see with non-targeting guide RNA, we have a high expression level of uh, uh, nucleocapsid protein, but with the targeting guide RNA, we have very high silencing efficiency in both hex and vero cells. And, and, and by far, guide RNA number one showed really high uh, uh, potency, as shown also here in this Western blot, where uh, compared to non-targeting guide, the targeting guide achieved uh, uh, very high uh, silencing at the protein level and the guide number one completely removed the uh, nucleocapsid protein. So we went on and we did this dose dependent uh, silencing assay and I hope you appreciate here that we have really potent guide RNA with cpicomolar uh, affinity or, or potency that we could calculate here through the IC50 band. Uh, we generated uh, uh, various uh, mutant by introducing a mismatches between the target and the guide RNA. And again, we did the three, uh, three nucleotide six, nine, 12, and so on from the five prime end, from the three prime end, from internal region. And we could see again that we have really, uh, that the silencing is dependent on the base pairing between the target and the guide RNA. Mm -hmm. It's worth noting that this guide RNA, this spacer sequence basically showed uh, uh, a more resilience to mismatch than, than the previous spacer we tested, as when we introduce three nucleotide and six nucleotide mismatches, there is a minor loss of silencing efficiency compared to the other one. So the degree of mismatch tolerance is really dependent on the spacer sequence you are studying. And it seems that this one has a higher affinity and could perhaps a higher mismatch tolerance. But what was really clear here is that this CAS-13 has the ability to tolerate mismatch, uh, up to three nucleotide mismatch. And that might be very important to fight the emergence of new variants through 
a single nucleotide uh, uh, single uh, nucleotide substitution that occurs throughout the replication of, of the virus. So uh, next, we, we thought, okay, that's really nice that we could show in virus-free model that we have really high silencing efficiency. Uh, we can specifically target the spike protein and nucleocapsid protein. Um, of this virus. Uh, so but what about silencing uh, replication competent virus? And so we approached the Peter Doherty Institute and its director, Professor Sharon Lewin, and, uh, and, and uh, we, we seek some, some help to uh, basically do this experiment in, in uh, cells infected with SARS-CoV-2. So the way we designed this assay is that uh, we would deliver CAS13 and its guide RNA to the viral cells and uh, then, trans then infect them with SARS-CoV-2 virus 72 hours uh, later and monitor viral replic replication inside the cells by uh, real-time PCR and infectivity assays. So uh, to make the long story short, uh, I just show this viral load in, in the supernatant that we measured, which show uh, high suppression of viral replication inside the cells by up to 90% with different guide RNA we use. So we use the, the guide RNA targeting nucleocapsid guide RNA targeting spike or pulled of guide RNA targeting either the spike, the non-structural protein seven, non-structural protein seven, which are subunits of RNA dependent RNA replication or a pool of guide RNA targeting the nucleocapsid uh, uh, protein. And, and we obtained a similar result with higher MOI. Uh, of, of the virus or, or higher dose of, of, of the virus. Uh, so that data really demonstrated that we can silence uh, uh, replication competent virus. But at that time, there was evidence that there are new variants emerging worldwide. And uh, I was shown in this uh, a nice cell paper, uh, a variant was really, uh, starting to dominate the world called the G614 when a point mutation in the spike was believed either to increase the viral uh, load or the affinity with, with, with the receptor. And, uh, and, and really uh, structural data uh, basically shows that this uh, uh, protein, uh, uh, this point mutation allowed the virus to become highly infectious and that explain this change in, in viral emergence uh, worldwide. And there are also other evidences that, that uh, new variants that are emerging can escape recognition by monoclonal antibodies and, and possibly uh, the, uh, the antibodies generated uh, uh, by, uh, through the vaccination. So uh, we, to address this um, question and to see whether our CAS-13 can tolerate uh, uh, mismatches and, and remain resilient to this mutational escape all RNA viruses they use, we designed this simple experiment in which we generated a guide RNA targeting either the spike or nucleocapsid protein and we introduced the single nucleotide mismatch at different positions in, highlighted here in blue. And we probed the silencing efficiency of each of this uh, guide RNA. I hope you can appreciate here that there is not much change between the wild type guide RNA that has full match with the target and the guide RNA that harbors one nucleotide mismatch. We did similar experiment with the, uh, with the nucleocapsid targeting guide RNA and except this guide RNA number one that showed a moderate loss of silencing efficiency, all other 
guide RNA retained full silencing efficiency despite one nucleotide mismatch with the target. And this is evidenced here in this Western blot, which showed the level of uh, 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 nucleocapsid protein expression. So overall, this data showed that Cas13 can uh, uh, very well tolerate a single nucleotide mismatch and potentially might remain active against a variance that, that, that emerges through, through the single nucleotide substitution. Uh, uh, so to further uh, basically investigate this point, we looked at this particular mutation that has been described as D614G, when one base, uh, there is one base substitution that led to uh, create uh, this uh, uh, mutant when we have A that is substituted by a G. So we designed uh, a guide RNA that are tiling this region where the mismatch uh, would occur at different position between the spacer and the target. And we probed the silencing efficiency with these different guide RNA. Uh, so what, what we saw is that despite this uh, a point mutation, uh, the majority of this guide RNA, guide RNA code number 15, 20, 25, and 30, uh, retained very high silencing efficiency against this variant despite one nucleotide mismatch. However, there was a moderate loss of silencing with guide RNA where the mismatch is positioned at position five or 10. So we went on and tested this construct against two viruses. So the ancestral SARS-CoV-2, the initial Wuhan strain, or the D600G strain. And so we delivered these guide RNA to the cells together with Cas13 uh, and uh, 48 hour post Cas13 delivery, we uh, infected the cells with these two strains and monitor the viral load by qPCR um, at 1, 24, and 48 hours. So uh, just would like to highlight that the initial type, the viral type we started with uh, was uh, much higher in, in the D614 strain that is worth it to keep in mind uh, compared to the ancestral one. And as expected, one hour post infection, the viral title in the media between non targeting guide, the guide RNA targeting NCP as a con positive control, or the guide targeting P614G, which harbor single nucleotide mismatch with this variant, not with the ancestral, uh, remained the same. So the virus did not replicate yet into the cells, and therefore there is no variability between non-targeting and targeting guide RNA in, in both conditions. However, a 24-hour post-infection, we see a dramatic reduction in a viral title against the ancestral, uh, a virus, which is expected because this is what we uh, have shown uh, previously, because this guide RNA, they have a full match with, with the target. And we have really high silencing efficiency as well against D614G, uh, except for this guide RNA harboring uh, a point mutation at position uh, 10. So in overall, this data tells us that that the guard RNA, they remain, uh, they remain active despite a single nucleotide mismatch with the target. Uh, so at 48 hours, we see the same trend that the silencing is retained against uh, both ancestral and D614 G strain. Uh, all right, so, so with that, I would like to conclude with this model. So I hope I convinced you that we shown here that we can reprogram CAS13 with the multiple guide RNA. We call this approach guide RNA multiplexing to target different regions of SARS-CoV-2, both a level of the genomic RNA and subgenomic RNA. And as a result, so there is a recognition of of uh, a guide RNA through 
RNA, RNA base bearing between the guide RNA and the target, which leads to activation of Cas13 nucleus domain and degradation of genomic and cell genomic viral RNA and aborted viral replication. Now, when there is an, a mutant strain, when the virus mutate, basically, that create uh, a single nucleotide mismatch. So what we show here that this Cas13 has a single nucleotide mismatch tolerance mechanism that we are leveraging to silence both the ancestral and the mutant. So we keep the pressure on the virus uh, that the virus cannot escape this Cas13 silencing uh, uh, approach. And uh, uh, together with this guide RNA multiplexing to target different regions uh, of uh, viral RNA genome and subgenome, uh, the virus is unlikely to mutate in different position and escape from the pressure uh, applied by Cas13 and its nucleus domain. And as a result, we would silence the, the, the ancestral and the mutant uh, RNA and unlike other approaches where point mutation can lead to uh, a viral escape, we shown here that Cas13 is likely to remain uh, potent uh, against uh, uh, various strain of SARS-CoV-2. So with that, I would like just to uh, uh, conclude with this slide that 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 basically summarize that we use Cas13 and its guard RNA as molecular toolbox. And, and we, we use this uh, programmable RNA targeting tool to silence gene fissions uh, as tumor drivers, overexpressed tumor transcript, point mutated oncogenic transcript, which I didn't have time to speak about today. Uh, I showed you some data showing that we can silence viral RNA. We use this to image RNA and we are very interested in developing new approaches to package Cas13 and guard RNA lipid nanoparticles for targeted delivery. And we are also developing some new approaches uh, uh, based on library screens, which is uh, uh, very exciting. And uh, so, so the idea is that we use this style, the guard RNA across uh, a defined gene and to create as much data as we can, and we compare the silencing profile of each guide RNA, which allows us to uncover the molecular basis behind the silencing efficiency of a very potent guide RNA and lack of efficiency with the guide RNA. And I have to say that GeneScript uh, 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 platform has been uh, very helpful of providing a libraries of, of, of guide RNA of different sizes we are working with. And, uh, and I'm extremely thankful to, to GeneScript for also providing uh, gene synthesis for the spike and nucleocapsid without which we couldn't do this work in just a few months. So I just would like to thank the people that did the work uh, especially Wing Zing Hu, who is a PhD student in, in the group, Joska Tassan, who is PhD students in the group, Amit and, and Chi Zhao, a bioinformatician, Gurjit Varshini, who are uh, master students in the group, and Caroline Aposto uh, in our lab, the Trapani lab, uh, the Ilias lab, the ZCC program. Uh, uh, our uh, uh, beloved collaborator, Professor Shalon Lewin and uh, Dr. Uh, Wei Zhao, who allowed us to use their uh, uh, expertise in virology and, and, and SARS-CoV-2 and their facility. And they were really, uh, 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 really crucial for this work uh, to be complete, uh, uh, accomplished. Uh, Ricky Johnson's group, uh, Stephen and Connor, for their collaboration on library screen. So I thank you for your attention and funding, and uh, I'll be happy to take your questions um, later. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mohamed, for your great and insightful presentations. We have learned a lot from you in the webinar today. 
Ladies and gentlemen, we have received quite a number of questions from you. However, we are unable to answer them right now due to technical constraints. Please do not worry, we will get back to you with all the answers individually. If you have any questions regarding Dr. Mohammed's work or you want to know more about Genscript services and products, please email to ap.marketing at genscript.com or visit Genscript website for more details. Last but not least, we are currently running Genscript 19th anniversary promotion in most APEC countries like Singapore, Australia, New Zealand, India, Middle East, Israel, and Hong Kong. Please feel free to scan the QR code at the left to get more information about these promotions. You may take a screenshot of this page and access to it later if you would like to. Once again, thank you so much Dr. Mohamed Farare for your wonderful presentations. And we hope this presentation is beneficial for all of you who are listening right now. We will see you again soon. Goodbye.